People are probably sick to death by now of Napoleon reviews and analyses on YouTube, etc. But I wanted to do one myself because I was invited by Sony to watch it at a pre-release screening in Dublin City a week before it came out. And I enjoyed the event tremendously. Overall, it was a nice experience to be invited in the first place, to get some pictures, you know, to have a nice free night out, to be perfectly honest. And it was in a beautiful theatre that I hadn't been to, Stella Theatre Cinemas in Rat Mines. And, like, the film itself was a part of the event as such, you know what I mean? So I... The event was the occasion and then the film was part of the occasion. So it wasn't like a normal cinema going experience. It was a kind of a, a, a kind of a night where we were treated like kind of, you know, many celebrities as such. Right. So I was blinded, I think, to the reality of the movie and the depiction of Napoleon Bonaparte. But it is not to say I didn't enjoy it. I did. But I did also mention in a video I did afterwards that there were parts of it that I just did not like at all, but I did enjoy it overall. But I think it was more to do with the actual event rather than the, f the film, if it was just the film itself. So let's dive into my review of the film. Obviously, we all know Napoleon's directed by Rid Ridley Scott. You know, he's directed such epics as Gladiator, Alien, Blade Runner, we all know this, okay? And Joaquin Phoenix is in the title role of Napoleon Bonaparte and Vanessa Kirby plays Josephine. And the film itself is a biopic which begins at the time of the reign of terror in France when public executions were taking place in the late 18th century. Here Napoleon is introduced as a pretty depressed young man and here is where the problems begin. It's to do with the age of Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is hitting 50 years old. Napoleon at this time was in his early to mid 20s and the reality is Joaquin Phoenix looks his age at the moment. Like I don't know it's he, he didn't really lose weight for the role. He didn't do anything special for the role. There was nothing really done to him to make him look younger. I, I keep thinking of Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer and how they went through his whole life and how well they they did his um, young version versus his old version. It was amazing. In this, it wasn't done at all. Like, And it was 30 years of Napoleon's life. And I really felt like they just didn't even care about that aspect of it, which really, really was bad. But I do actually have a solution if I was to write Napoleon, if I was to direct Napoleon, I would do it a completely different way, which I'll get to in the end. So nonetheless, suspending disbelief is something we are used to as cinema goers. The story would from there fit in the rest of Napoleon Bonaparte's life right up to his death on St. Helena Island in his early 50s. So in the film, which is approximately 2 hours 40 minutes long, give or take, this squeezes in 30 years of Napoleon's life. And just remember, this is one of the most influential people of all time. Fitting in 30 years of his life is like fit, trying to fit in a whole TV series like other people have pointed out into like a, into one sitting. It's, it's kind of ridiculous to think about it because there are some lists where Napoleon is literally the second most influential person of all time after Jesus Christ. Now, people might disagree with that, but there is a genuine list that says that. Let's get into some positives around it. I will say this, though Ridley Scott doesn't make a bad go at this in respects to giving us the highlight reels of Napoleon's life, which is kind of a fascinating roller coaster through it. I think what's happening here as well is that people are so keyed into the interpretation of Napoleon because it doesn't fit really the authentic character. So they're disregarding the whole movie outright. The film actually is an unbelievable feat in filmmaking. It isn't an absolutely terrible movie as a movie. It's a terrible interpretation or depiction of this gigantic character and this is where the problem lies. It is understandable though that people are exceptionally disappointed. I do get that. But 
Scott does provide entertainment in different ways, and I still think there's an audience for it, but you just cannot take it as a history lesson. Really, the big problem is ultimately the direction that Phoenix went with Scott as the master director was 100% the wrong way, because as I mentioned before, Phoenix, in my opinion, was too old for the role. I will give a very simple solution to this problem at the end, so stay tuned for that. I heard an excellent review of the film, which I will paraphrase, shout out to Apostolic Majesty, who described it best when he felt that Phoenix ju was just playing an older version of Commodus from Gladiator, and like maybe like he survived Gladiator and was dressed up now as Napoleon. That's like a brilliant way of looking at it. It does feel like that, because the whole way throughout, he has this kind of depressed demeanor, and it feels like a cold interpretation of Napoleon, which is ridiculous because if you look at the artistry, the artworks around Napoleon, it's all so colorful and buoyant and kind of just very, you know, pizzazz and there's a pizzazz to it and there's a kind of a glory to it. Like, and this doesn't really have that at all. And I think this kind of sums up like exactly how I feel about this portrayal as Apostolic Majesty put it. It did come out that, like, it did, it did actually come out in the interview as well that like Phoenix was struggling to find a way to play Napoleon and I think this actually happened. So maybe Napo he wasn't the right fit. He didn't fit the age, you see. He didn't... Joaquin Phoenix is after doing huge amounts of huge big movies, Joker and, you know, these big, 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 dark, brooding success successes like in terms of the box office and stuff, but... It looks like he maybe even is taking a bit of a toll on him, you know? Like, and I just feel he was the wrong character for it. You know, the wrong actor for it. For for the actual full biopic. And the full biopic shouldn't have been done in a movie. It should have been done in a TV series. Because they kind of leaned into this dark, brooding, depressed genius mode. Which maybe Napoleon on St. Helena at the end of his life was. But at the siege of Toulon, when he's in his mid-twenties... He certainly was not a dark, moody, depressed 50-year-old man. It doesn't fit the proper interpretation at all. And this stiffness continued throughout. And we couldn't kind of jump from battle scene to battle scene. I think the battle scenes were reasonable, tr str reasonably strong throughout. But the problem was because they were jumping from occasion to occasion. From big, huge moments to big, huge moments. One minute you're in France, one minute you're in Egypt, one minute you're in Russia. It just felt like... It was fitting in way too much. And although I enjoyed seeing these moments and learning a bit more about it, but it was just felt like it didn't really feel like he was there. It just felt that he was more involved in the relationship with Josephine the whole way throughout, which is kind of underpinning the whole film, which I'll get to in a second. But I will say that these were kind of cool, these battle scenes. And they did look awesome. Because there was less CGI than normally in, in a kind of movie like this. And I thought the Battle of Waterloo was kind of cool to be honest. But we'll get into that. But let me talk about Vanessa Kirby as Josephine. I thought Vanessa Kirby was excellent in her portrayal. There's like a genuine depth to her character. Which is not really in other characters. I did feel for her character also. Like in the last couple of scenes. I won't ruin what happens in the end. But it was kind of sad. Um, and I did feel for her. I did feel for Napoleon I guess as well. But... Um, this kind of relationship I was always fascinated by because um, I, I knew about this and the letters uh, and he, he's, I, I guess his obsession with Josephine throughout his life. This is kind of, this is, there is something to that. I was fascinated because he was like this huge military figure with an extraordinary career, like one of the most influential people of all time. But there was this like authentic human dark kind of side to him, which is usually hidden from the history books. But in Napoleon's case, it's not because of the letters. So I feel like there's this genuine interest in Napoleon as well. Like there's this kind of depth to his character. But I feel like the movie pushed this side of, the, of, of his character to be the overall meaning of the whole story. Which I felt is kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. It kind of makes a joke out of his kind of, his military career. Which is like approximately 80 battles like... He's got more battles than Alexander the Great and uh, Julius Caesar put together. He's he's actually won more battles individually than, mo than either of them. Like, that's unbelievable. I think there's this kind of anti-French sentiment as well, which is just my theory, because, like, that France is, like, the oldest country in Europe. It's, like, it's got the most military campaigns 
in all of history. Like it's a hugely important country in the world, but it's become this kind of mockery, you know, in the last couple of hundred years or whatever. And it's kind of, and but not for me though. I like France. I like the French culture and stuff like that. I know there's this kind of American, British kind of anti-French sentiment, which is kind of pervades society. Because as I mentioned in other videos, there's this Romano, British, American propaganda psychology viewpoint that kind of overrides everything else, you know. And I think this Fr the Fr French are, are, are um, victims of this. So yeah, like to, to just to sum up on Vanessa Kirby's character, Josephine, like, yes, it's fucking really cool to see this, but it's not cool for it to be kind of front and center almost throughout the whole movie. And it feels like it's kind of the whole reason why he's doing this, which is kind of stupid, in my, in my opinion. Some people say the costuming was poor. I couldn't disagree more. I thought they looked terrific. The action was very good, especially in the Waterloo f finale, which was incredible. And I felt it, it was natural concerning the extras, you know, being there fighting instead of like a CGI fest. Um, so that's always a good thing. And I appreciate that. What was bothering me, though, was, which I touched on already, was... Uh, Phoenix's mood is how cold and tonally dark it feels almost like a Skyfall Daniel Craig Bond or a kind of broody Batman or Joker style Napoleon it just doesn't feel right it's like an all alternative universe Napoleon that can be enjoyed if you want but you have to disregard it as a kind of a history lesson or like an authentic view of history and you, you know, you can enjoy this movie, enjoy the ride. Like, if you're not a history fan, you can really enjoy this movie. Like, this is like another Scott world, right? That he, that because he's so used to building huge worlds. Unfortunately, not everybody's going to join him in this universe because with a character like Napoleon Bonaparte, too much scrutiny exists around it, like too much expectations, you know, and disregarding and slightly disdaining history is not welcome. You know, um, because this version is kind of rewriting history to suit your own narrative in a sense. And lastly, without ruining it, because I don't want to spoil everything, Scott makes this kind of statement at the end, like a bit of text on the screen, which is laughable because of, you know, being a product of the British Empire, I think the British Empire cannot throw stones at the French Empire. Like, you know, I just say that I won't say any more than that, but it's definitely like an anti-Napoleon, anti-French sentiment by doing this. Also, Phoenix uh, did call Napoleon a small, fat tyrant in an interview, which is ultimately what they th I think they think of him, you know, and this kind of really shows the fact that he said that it shows that this is what they think of him, you know. So here's my idea of how it could be rewritten. And there's parts of it that relate to Ireland, of course. And it's to do with the book Napoleon's Doctor. Napoleon spent three years with an Irish doctor in St. Helena. His own doctor wouldn't go with him to St. Helena, so he brought this Irish doctor who put himself forward for the job. You can see my videos on this topic. So as I mentioned already, Joaquin Phoenix was, is 49 years old. So the reality was, Napoleon actually went on to St. Helena at that age, right? So the film could have been about Napoleon in the last couple of years of his life on the island and Joaquin Phoenix would have been perfect for it because the way he is, the way he portrayed him could have worked in that because he was exiled to this island. He was just defeated by the British and he had this Irish doctor with him who started taking notes and this doctor is actually elevated to uh, a viewpoint that he in part saved Napoleon's legacy because without these notes and the subsequent book we would have lost a lot of what Napoleon was thinking in the last couple of years right so on this island in St Helena there was lots of stuff going down because ultimately he was exiled to this island by the British they wouldn't kill him because France loved him so much right remember this France loved him so much he wasn't a dark brooding the press character going around from country to country, he was this big, huge life force, you know, and France loved him. And Britain would not kill him because they wouldn't make him a martyr because it would cause more problems for them, right? So the theories go that they were slowly poisoning him while he was there 
and he died quite young in his early 50s. So this is perfect for the portrayal that they had in the whole biopic. Joaquin Phoenix and Scott, well I don't even know if Scott could make a movie like this because it's too intimate and it's too small. But Napoleon could have been on this island talking to his doctor and reflecting back on his life and you could have snippets of his life. You could have a de-aged Phoenix or just a younger actor that looks like Phoenix uh, playing him, right? And then you could have had him, Phoenix, then playing the older uh, Napoleon towards the end at Waterloo and stuff like that and then he goes on to the island but the majority of it would take place on the island because there was a lot of drama on this island as well you have the whole theories around him being poisoned you have the doctor acting as a mediator with the island's governor and Napoleon remember Napoleon was an emperor of the French he was still emperor of the French on this island right so this would have been fantastic but the problem is with Ridley Scott, he wouldn't be able to do this because he needs to create big, huge, massive, epic tales. And unfortunately for him, this hasn't worked in a long time. But I will give no, I will give uh, Ridley Scott his due, though. He's in his mid-80s, which is unbelievable, really. But maybe he should wind down and start making more intimate dramas, such as the one I've just presented. And it could be great. A 90 to 120 minute drama about Napoleon exiled on St. Helena. With his Irish doctor, Dr. Barry O'Mara, reliving the highlights of Napoleon's career and leaning into the theories around him being poisoned, etc. This would have been super interesting, in my opinion. So anyway, that's my review. This is my first time ever reviewing a movie, um, and I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like it, leave a, a comment below, like it, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. And if you really want me to do some more reviews, I can do them every so often. And I will definitely present them here. So make sure you leave a comment if you want me to do more of these. Thank you so much.